Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha, Hawaii. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm your new friend. Actually, by this point, I'm your dear friend as we journey to take your health back. We are coming to you live from downtown Honolulu from the studios of Think Tech Hawaii. Today, our topic of discussion will be on the healthy living revolution in Hawaii. What we would like to take away from today's discussion is the idea that we can truly take healthy back through awareness, education, and with a com community of like-minded people. So remember that now, that's very important. We gotta stay with these like-minded people and if we can't find them, we've gotta educate them and gather them because it's so much easier. It's so much easier when everyone's on the same page and until we get to that point, we gotta work on it really hard so, with some people. But other than that, we just gotta make sure that we're in the like-minded community of healthiness. Today, we are very honored to welcome Pamela Sue, who is a dear friend. She has been a lifestyle coach for 20 years and markets and distributes whole food supplementation. She is committed to applying and teaching the principles of health through nutrition and sharing her life experiences, lecturing throughout the United States and here in Hawaii. Aloha, Pamela Sue. Aloha, Wendy, and thank you so much for inviting me to the oh, show. Oh, I, to I just here. wanted you to come on because every time I hang out with you, my health levels go up a notch two or three or four. And so every time I stray away, remember I told you about like-minded community? Every time I stray away from that, I need doses of you because you just <laughs> live it and it's your lifestyle. And so this is what I want. I want to reach this point and then I want to be infectious on a health journey to infect others with such greatness of knowledge and just experience of how to live and take healthy back. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Well, I awakened to this healthy living revolution about 30 years ago. Nope. 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I was in my early 40s and I was a cleaning lady at the time and I was experiencing a lot of fatigue, some uh, inflammation in the muscles and the joints. Um, and I was thinking, oh my gosh, what am I gonna be like 20 years from now? Mm -hmm. and it really made me start to be concerned about my future. And I thought about my parents. My mom had had her first heart attack when she was 40 and my dad had died of cancer at the age of 62. Mm. So I started praying and asking for, you know, what's the answer to all of this? And I received um, a teaching called Health Through Nutrition by a Dr. Joel Robbins in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And that was changed my life forever. You know, we had those events that changed our life forever and that was it for me. And what I learned uh, began my journey on this healthy living revolution. And thankfully, I found there were other people that wanted to come along on this journey like you, Wendy. And um, what, I, what we have woken up to is that we really do want to take responsibility and take our health back, and it really is up to us to do that for ourselves and our family. Exactly, you know, we have one body, one temple, the, and only we know when it aches and hurts. You know, we know when we're happy or sad, and we can put on a happy face and not be, you know, but we have to take healthy back by stewarding our bodies the way we know best. And I tell you, it's sure much easier when I hang out with you. Trust me, you, you have no idea the impact you have had on my life. So, we are truly on a journey. And um, right now it's you and us, uh, me, and we're gathering the stones of healthiness. And so, I just remember back in the day how simple it was. We didn't have all these trendy diets. We didn't have all this super food, you know, these crazes that you have to do this and you have to do that and not do this. You know, life was so much simpler back then. I, I mean, we would just go out to the backyard, pick food from Tutu's garden, and we would eat it. We didn't open cans and go to fast food places and, you know, do that. So we were so blessed as kids. We played outside. I lived on the beach. We swam until I was like, popo. Right. That was dark. <laughs> you know, no sunburn, but just having the time of my life, we'd play out there until we were dirty. I mean, really dirty. Then we'd come home, we change clothes, and then we go to sleep. Right. I mean, of course, we fit in a meal or two then here and there. But, you know, it was just so much simpler. To, today looks so different. These kids, they come home, they go to the TV, they play with their computers, they play with their games. Family dinners are replaced by fast food. Let's grab a bite, bring it home in a container, sit down, maybe as a family, maybe not, but just eating that way. 
and it's just different. Sugary sodas, that was a treat. When I was a good girl, maybe on a Saturday, we got a sugary sweet, <laughs> right? Yeah. But now, that's the drink of choice. Exactly. You know, they're drinking these sodas and the soft drinks, everything in a can, everything in a bottle. You know what? I, I, just, I just don't understand it. You know, and all these sugary drinks, they, 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 they take away all of our, our zest for life. They spike us up with all that sugar, that greatness of sugar, and then they drop us down. And then we don't got no energy. Right. And then we got to drink another drink, those energy drinks, yeah. to pop us back up. Right. You know, family, so is there any hope for us? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think the, the main thing is to remember that we're not alone, you know, and we can become a part of communities everywhere that are awakening to this need to shift back to the basics of whole food, plant-based nutrition, because that really does matter. Going back to those basics, you know, it's so much more important than looking good in our yoga pants, wouldn't you agree? <laughs> <laughs> and we have started a, a healthy revolution right here in Hawaii. Yay. We're taking healthy back. Yeah, I know, we're trying really hard, Pamela Sue. <laughs> and you know, the goodness is that people are listening. And uh, we do, we, we have some help from different documentaries that are coming in, but people have to d discern what's right and what's not. Mm -hmm. And so by hearing it from you and I and gathering the stones of health, more of us can get the word out so that when we see the, the truth, we'll know that that's the truth and that's what we should be doing and right. living and taking healthy back. Yeah. So how are we taking health back, Pamela Sue? Well, it all starts with seeing how important it is to take care of ourselves. You know, if we aren't taking care of ourselves, we can't be the best version of ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. So we need to all ask ourselves, how are we doing in this area and these things? And I mean really doing. How are we doing with um, eating real food? You know, are we eating real food or are we eating stuff out of a package that's processed? Um, how are we doing with our exercise? Are we exercising most days, at least five days a week? Mm -hmm. And what about water? And that doesn't mean tea and coffee and sodas and wine and all those beverages that we seem to drink, but water is so important. 75% of our body is water and our bodies need water. And then sleep. I really <laughs> like to talk about the sleep. Our society is very sleep deprived and we get so many benefits from a good night's sleep. Our body cleanses, it, de it, it detoxifies. We have healing that takes place while we're sleeping and hormones are replenished even. Um, so we need proper sleep to be healthy. Absolutely, okay, so I'm guilty. <laughs> and I don't get enough sleep, but I function, but I know as I'm getting older, I need to get more sleep and so I'm working very hard on that. Um, and I will admit right now that I get about four hours of sleep and it's a bit not enough by stand, other standards. But uh, as I'm retired, I'm trying to hit five hours. And if I'm up at the fifth hour, I'll stay on the bed and just be still and meditate. So I'm learning. So you can teach this old dog new tricks. Okay? <laughs> We're gonna work on that. Uh, yes. You need seven to eight I hours know, but night. <laughs> Oh my gosh. For, so so I'm, I'm working on that. And I also wanted to throw a trivia question. I'm always gonna do this. How much water does our body really need? I mean, you say our body's about 75% liquid. So the rule of thumb for water, um, the basic rule of thumb, don't hold me to it. But what I've learned is that you take your body weight and you divide it by two. So if I were 100 pounds divided by two, that's 50. 50 ounces of water is what my body needs, minimal. Yeah. And from there I can drink more than that, but try not to drink less than half your body weight. Mm -hmm. Is that correct, Pamela? So I think it is. Um, you know, we, we don't want to overdo it, mm -hmm. but it's always a challenge to get more water. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and whatever it takes. I like to infuse the water with fruit and, and put it on the counter and drink infused water. Just that little taste of fruit in there makes it really delicious and really helps yeah. with that. So the next slide talks about two startling trends in our world. So we need to be aware of these startling trends in our world, Pamela Sue. Tell us about it. Well, um, we do have, we do need to be aware mm -hmm. of these two startling trends. And awareness is the key, right? right. Being aware, being aware, and that's, that's the way how we start making these healthier changes. Yeah, so let me see. 
Would you agree that we are living in a chemical world now? Not like Madonna who says we live in a material world. <laughs> so I don't know what's worse. Is it a material world is worse than a chemical world? But I remember just um, from some uh, taking a, a step back into my childhood, we lived in Waipahu. And I remember on Friday nights talking about chemical worlds. On a Friday night, what did we do? Because we didn't go out to the movies and we didn't have a lot of access you know, to social life. But I do remember there were a lot of mosquitoes in Waipahu because we lived by the sugar plantations. And there was a mosquito truck. I remember that. You remember? <laughs> okay. So this truck would shoot out this smoke. Yeah. And we thought, whoa, look at this. Just like those rock stars with all the smoke coming out of the truck, right? And we used to chase. Don't tell me you got on the bike and went after Oh, hell. We were doing that in Michigan. <laughs> oh, oh, you were? You guys had them there, too? We did. Oh, okay. So not just Waipahu. Okay, I grew up in that's Michigan. That's funny. This Where did what that I did. come from? I know, but that's what we did. <laughs> I for, know, right? And it was Can fun. Can you believe it? And yes, and in, in, and our our parents encouraged it. Yeah. Well, they didn't stop us. They didn't sure. stop us, and they thought, wow. <laughs> they didn't know. Friday night, that's they the They didn't home. know. They just didn't know. But now we know different, right? So would you agree that we are living in a chemical world? Yeah, we're bombarded with toxins mm -hmm. from every every everywhere. You know, we're breathing them. You know, they're in our cleaning supplies. When I was a cleaning lady, I was breathing that. You know, Hawaii has pretty nice clean air when the volcano's not going off and <laughs> when the trade winds are blowing, right? But we breathe them, um, we're, we put them on our skin with lotions and all the things that we put on. It's, did you know that our skin absorbs toxins just as if we're eating them? Exactly. So we need to be aware exactly. of what we're putting on our skin, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, our lawn, right? And our pools, mm -hmm. and um, we're even eating them. I know, and I know that if you can't pronounce the word, that means we better not touch it. And I remember, Pamela Sue, <laughs> you were the funniest thing when I was hanging out with you. We'd go to the store, I think it was like a store called Blue Hawaii or something, they had all these natural <laughs> products. This Japanese girl, the poor girl, you asked her, she was, she was telling us to try the products, natural, honey products, and you kept asking her, can you eat it? And she goes, hi, 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 can you eat it? And she said, yes, yes. And so you were putting it on your tongue. And she goes, no, 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 don't eat it. Do you remember? <laughs> Poor thing. She just I didn't know. understand. She but didn't. But those products are edible. Yeah, those they are. They market them as edible. They are. And so I remember that <laughs> I love, every love. time, like right now, all I put on my face is coconut oil yep. or coconut oil mm -hmm. or grapeseed oil. Yeah. Because you see, so I'm listening to what you say, and you have influenced <laughs> my, Aww. and you have saved a lot of money for me. No. But um, because coconut oil, I mean, I can buy a big jar, yeah. I drink it, I gargle with it, I do all the great it's things with it. It's good for our hair. Yes. It's good for the dogs when they get itchy skin. Yes. You can and rub them down with it. It's and great for our memory <laughs> because it's the fat yeah. that our body and our brains need Absolutely. along with avocado oils, yeah. right? So, heck, right? So if you can't pronounce the ingredients in our foods, then you're in trouble. Mm. So have you ever heard if you can't pronounce it? That means it's not going to be the best for us, yeah, exactly. right? And so we have to live with that thought mm -hmm. in our head. The ingredients this is what we want to look at, and they're going to be very tiny, but you've got to read them because that's your future. If you agree, yeah. right? So the less you see in the ingredients list, the better. Yeah. So if there's only like coconut oil, what do you see in the ingredients list? Coconut oil. And that ingredients list is very tiny and you have to search for it sometimes. Mm -hmm. And that's by design. And right. What they say on the label is not what's in there. Right, <laughs> right. Know? But we gotta find that ingredients list and the less words that are in that ingredients list, the better that food is. Right, and then the closest to the source. I mean, like if you have applesauce, you wanna make sure that the apple is the first ingredient there. Yeah. Right? Right. Yeah, I know we worked with Dr. David Katz mm -hmm. and he has a whole website designed to teach kids how to read labels. Mm -hmm. And um, if we just take some time to go out and look at these sources right. of information, we ourselves will be, I mean, just growing healthier longer. But don't forget your glasses. Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> it is hard to read. It is hard to read. So the whole idea is, but first of all, taking the time to read, but then yes, bring your glasses or a little magnifying sheet that you can go ahead and, and source it. Yep. But then again, if it's that many and that small, Maybe it's not the right product for us. Yeah. So, Pamela, we're going to take a break right now, and we've covered a little bit about 
the Healthy Living Revolution and the journey and how important it is to just hang out with like-minded friends like yourself. And if anybody wants to come and hang out with us and just learn and understand more, this is what we're doing. This is a revolution, a healthy revolution that we're trying to start. So we'll be right back in 60 seconds. I'm Jay Fidel, Think Tech. Think Tech loves energy. I'm the host of Mina, Marco, and Me, which is Mina Morita, former chair of the PUC, former legislator, and uh, Energy Dynamics, a consulting organization in energy. Marco Mangelsdorf is the CEO of ProVision Solar in Hilo. Every two weeks, we talk about energy, everything about energy. Come around and watch us. We're on at noon on Mondays, every two weeks on Think Tech. Aloha. When I was growing up, I was among the one in six American kids who struggle with hunger. And hungry mornings make tired days. Grumpy days. Bleh kind of days. But with the power of breakfast, the kids in your neighborhood can think big and be more. When we're not hungry for breakfast, we're hungry for more. More ideas. More dreams. More fun. When kids aren't hungry for breakfast, they can be hungry for more. Go to hungeris.org and lend your time or your voice to make breakfast happen for kids in your neighborhood. Aloha. Here we are again with Pamela Sue, and she's with the starting up or working with the Healthy Living Revolution. And uh, what we discussed earlier in the show is just sticking around like-minded people. And um, when you find this core of friends, our lifestyle becomes a greater lifestyle, much easier because everyone's thinking the same way. Because I remember so clearly and even till today, when I'm, I was trying to start off eating healthier and I try to eat less you know, of, of the, the bad things and trying to go more plant strong. And so I would just kind of say, I'm not gonna eat that today. I'm not gonna eat that and go, Wendy, that's your favorite. Why don't you just eat it? It's just one, one naughty meal. And I go, yeah, but they don't understand. I had a naughty meal yesterday and the day before because the other friends said, it's okay. So. As I grow, uh, grew my nucleus of healthier friends, it became easier because they were encouraging me to, yes, Wendy, good job, good job. You're doing a great job. Just keep eating healthy. I'm so you know, excited that I get encouraged versus slammed or slapped because I want to do the right thing. Mm. So Pamela Sue, you know, the, the trends that affect us are so out there. Can you just tell us a little bit about these trends, these two trends that really, really affect us? Well, we just talked about them. Mm -hmm. We talked about the chemicals in mm -hmm. food and the toxins in the environment, and our foods are deficient. We have deficient foods. And um, we, how do these two trends affect us? Mm -hmm. um, well, it all contributes to oxidative stress. And that is at the cellular level, the toxins, the unhealthy ingredients. Um, it's stress just from life. You know anybody like that? <laughs> uh, yes, everybody outside of this office. <laughs> yeah. So the bottom line is oxidative stress causes aging and disease. Mm -hmm. But the great news is we can reduce oxidative stress with antioxidants every single day. We need to get them in. Um, have you ever squeezed a, a, a lemon on lemon juice on an apple? and noticed how it protects it from turning brown. It's, that's the aging process that it's slowing down. The lemon has very powerful antioxidants in us. And the only in it, and the only way we can get those antioxidants is from fruits and vegetables. And they protect us and they slow down the aging. That's why eating seven to 13 servings of fruits and vegetables is so important because we need lots of antioxidants to protect us. So what I'm hearing you say is if I wasn't just on a health journey for my body and just to feel good, but if I changed up my diet and my lifestyle, it'll help me look better. Is that what you're kind of saying? Sure, right? because it's going to reduce the aging process exactly. and the oxidative stress. Exactly. And you know, Pamela, so I've known you for many years, and I will just tell you that every time I see you, you're looking younger and younger, <laughs> and I'm so excited about that. And when I work with all the different young ladies entering in con contest and all that, I continue to <clears throat> share this idea with them because I simply tell them, you know, you are 22 and 23 years old. You look great. You're in your prime. Yeah. and getting to your prime. But when you're 60s, 
what do you want to look like then? Do you want to look like you're in your 60s or 70s, or do you want to look like you're in your 30s or 40s? <laughs> and you know what the answer to that is. Well, well if they start younger, <laughs> I tell you, the journey becomes even sweeter, smoother, and more beautiful. And that's what we want for all. And I think it needs to be even younger than that because you know, in the 20s, they're, gonna, they're not really open to hearing that. But if we can get the children when they're young and start feeding their cells, their body will start craving more of the same. Mm -hmm. So eating lots of fruits and vegetables will help with this because they contain powerful antioxidants. And let me just show you. So I always want to talk about my apple. Because, you know, you hear the saying, an apple day keeps the doctor away. Mm -hmm. And Pamela Sue, I mean, this apple contains about like 10,000 nutrients and vitamins. Yep. Is this important? Is this what you're talking about? Yes. Yes. So, yeah, I want you to tell us about all the greatness in fruits and veg. Okay. Well, um, I think he's going to show us a slide, right? Oh, okay, yeah, he's going to put up one, another slide <laughs> there. There it is. There you go. So this is, an, this is really amazing, right? Um, these fruits and vegetables that are... Um, It's pretty fascinating. They're packed with thousands of phytonutrients, which are plant nutrients. They have vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and everything else that helps prevent disease and reduce the aging process. So this list is only 400 of the 10,000 that scientists believe are in, a fr in a, one fruit or one vegetable. And the different colors of fruits and vegetables will bring even more variety of phytonutrients or plant nutrients to them as well. So we need these plant nutrients in all the colors of the rainbow. You ever hear about eating the rainbow diet? Yes. So yes. What, a great, what a great concept, yeah, right? right. And why do we need to do that? Because they, these nutrients will cleanse and detoxify and protect us from these two trends that we're all facing. Fruits and vegetables give us the right balance and the synergy of nutrients that our body needs. So if you compare the list mm -hmm. um, of that many fruits and vegetables, uh, the nutrients that are in just in the apple, mm -hmm. that's only 400 of the 10,000 compared to 20 on a vitamin label. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it make more sense just to go ahead and eat the apple? We really can't replace the apple. Yes, and right? so that, that's so true. An apple day keeps the doctor away. I mean, imagine, right, 10,000 nutrients and vitamins. Imagine if you had to take that and consume it. And if you did, where'd you end up? Right. I'd have to call ER and you would go exactly. there <laughs> to pump out your gut because of all that stuff that, that you just con consume. But when you do it in the natural form. It's delicious. It's delicious. And you know what? <laughs> to me, guys, this is fast food at its best. Right? right? I mean, you barely, you just have to wash it. You don't have to even cut it. You don't cook it. You just wash it and you eat it. So then this is the natural way. So tell us a little bit about Vitamin suppl supplementation. Well, yeah, so we don't have a vitamin deficiency. Mm -hmm. We have a whole food deficiency in our diets. So again, it's consciousness and awareness and, and being aware of this. And our revolution is all about going back to the basics of being clean, local, and mostly plant-based. Okay. So now, Pamela Sue, now I know what you put on your body. It's all going to be natural and organic. It's all going to be the things that we can eat. So tell me, what do you eat? What about animal products? Um, are you considered a vegan, vegetarian, pescatarian? What, what, what would I say? That's so funny. People ask me that all the time. I don't <laughs> want to be labeled any of those exactly. things. Exactly. <laughs> me too. <laughs> because me you too. never know where I'm, when I'm going to eat some dairy or if mm -hmm. I'm going to eat some. And that's OK. Yes. We just don't want to make it a habit of every single day. Mm -hmm. So I'm not a vegan or a vegetarian. But I do eat animal products, um, but I am careful to be aware to be sure they are fed or eating clean food because mm -hmm. we are what we eat and they are what they eat. So we don't want to be eating animal products that have antibiotics or hormones or any of those things that could damage our health as well because they're toxic, right? So I'm really careful about that. Um, you know, like grass-fed beef. They have right. omega-3s in that grass-fed beef. Corn-fed beef is omega-6. We want the omega-3s from the grass-fed beef. Did you know the Big Island is the pioneer in the grass-fed beef movement? Yay! That's great. That's I know. fabulous. I, that's Why? amazing. I love it. Leads love the way, it. right? Right. And so I eat them sparingly because they are more expensive because there's more work that goes into raising a calf, you know, on grass than there is into getting them fat on corn. So I eat plant, uh, animal food sparingly, but I like to follow Michael Pollan's advice. And he says, to eat food, not too much, mostly plants. Right. So I eat lots of salad, um, local fruits and vegetables, 
smoothies with frozen berries. I love fermented foods like uh, kimchi, cultured vegetables, and kombucha. Those are rich in, in probiotics and enzymes that help the digestive system. And I supplement with whole food uh, plant-based supplementation to bridge the nutritional gaps because I don't always, always eat right. So this way, I can afford to do the 80-20 rule. You know, 80% of the time, eat healthy, mm -hmm. clean, plant-based nutrition. 20% of the time, go ahead and splurge, whatever that may be, including an order of French fries, Yes, right? amen. <laughs> and so guys, okay, remember now, 80% healthy, 20%, the other things. Splurge. Um, have splurge. fun. Okay. Have a glass All of right. wine. Enjoy your life. <laughs> Eat the birthday cake when you go out. Right. And the key is not to let food become an issue. Right. You know, don't let it become an issue. Don't talk to people about it. Just eat it that way and right. they'll start to see you. Because a lot of times people are afraid of what they're going to think about you according to what you eat. Right. But don't make an issue out of it. Exactly. Just make the changes and set an example, and you'll watch. People will follow you. And example. they are watching. They are. They are and watching. They're because they're, they knew you 20 years ago, and they're going like, yeah. you're, going to, you're doing something right, girl. So <laughs> I want to watch you and figure it out. And so, yes, they are watching us very closely. Yes. You know, they always said, oh, when you eat plant strong or, you know, this kind of diet healthy, it's so expensive to eat healthy. You know, and so I, I, yeah, it may cost a little bit, but you eat less, but you're eating better. So you're going for quality, right? right. So I always say is that when you eat better today, you're not going to be mm, going to the doctor as much. Right. And so what does that mean? Saving in medical bills yes. means that, yes, I get to eat better quality of food, get sick less, and I can enjoy my life. Yes. Right? In a healthful way. And isn't that the way we want to grow mm -hmm. as we grow older? Because, um, like, our age is just a number. Yeah, it is. It's just a number. But how do we approach 60s and 70s and 80s matters to me. Right. And so by making the right choices today will matter on that journey. Yeah. And so what are your thoughts about that, about eating uh, and paying for a better quality today? and not having medical bills. So your thoughts on that? Well, we can invest or we can subs we can invest in our wellness mm -hmm. or we subsidize our illness. Um, we get to choose, right? Mm -hmm. So I prefer to invest in my wellness and um, it's either pay now or pay later. Mm -hmm. So I would rather pay now and enjoy all that healthy, delicious food because it really truly is healthy and delicious to eat that way. Mm -hmm. And rather than to feel sick, and to have to pay the medical bill, and is insurance gonna cover it and go through all of that, you know, right. I'd rather invest rather than just my wellness and subsidize my illness. I, I go for that. Amen. <laughs> and you know, we're gonna wrap this up because our talk is coming to an end, but you know, 20 years ago, you weren't this full of vitality and you were hurting a little bit. And so how do you feel today? Pam? Well, I'm in my 60s. Yes. And I have more vitality and health today than I did 20 years ago and is going to just keep getting better because people like you are going to partner with me and we're going to bring more people in and have fun with this as we build community. The main, how do we do this? The main thing is to become educated um, and stay educated. There are so many documentaries and books available and just to, that will inspire you and to educate you because we have to change the way we think about food, right? And once we see how powerful it can be and ha how wonderful it really is, it's really is amazing. We'll support the local, eat local movement, go to the local health food stores, and uh, attend the educational seminars that are available in the community. And be brave. Try new foods. Don't be afraid. And just have fun with it. Wow, that's great information. So if everyone, you didn't get it the first time, you're going to find the link that we're going to send out, and you're going to listen to this and make healthier choices and join the healthy living revolution because you too can look and feel as good as Pamela Sue in her 60s and she, as she did not feel this way in her 40s. So we want more of this for everybody. So from Pamela Sue and myself, mahalo for listening and just take your health back, guys. Aloha, everyone.